first obviously things are opening up and back to some semblance of normality here in the uk you're able to dine indoors drink indoors go to bingos and all that malarkey and people are happy happy again and i'm not gonna lie it makes me happy to see how people happy i hate birthdays i think celebrating your birthday over the age of 21 is r worded but i'm also very happy when I see other people enjoying themselves, right? I just heard now on a Tim Dillon's podcast, um, his producer Ben mentioned something that made me legitimately want to throw up in my mouth. But supposedly T Ben's wife um, is really into birthdays and they have this thing in their relationship where for a whole month before, yeah, for a whole month before, yeah, no, sorry, for um, on the day, when, sorry, let me start again. Yeah, Ben's wife is really into birthdays and for some reason, she's got this odd thing that she does where every week leading up to Ben's birthday, she buys him a birthday present. But for some reason, she started really early this year because she got too excited. So she's buy she's been buying Ben a she's been buying him a birthday present since you know this week, May. And I'm guessing next week again and the following week until his actual birthday, which is at the end of June, which is legitimately one of the most cringiest things I've heard, but also fills me with glee that there's somebody out there that enjoys birthdays that much. So when I'm seeing people like this, or which I'm gonna play in this clip, enjoying themselves and having a semblance of normality, doing the most mundane things, like going to bingo go seeing their grandchildren it really does make me smile and really does make me hopeful for the future it really really does so let's play the clip and then we'll go on it from the other side whatever nagging doubts there are the next step has been taken that even my grandfather now he's got both vaccines but he's still quite cautious like he doesn't really He's still a bit anxious about having a hug and, you know, but he's very excited about the pubs being open. Very excited. Ah, oh, bless him. We don't know what other variants may may come to the surface. So there's no way of knowing, but you've just got to take, take it as it comes, don't you, I suppose. But people have been hugging for the last couple of weeks and this is more or less saying kicking. Now, you can hug families and everything and get on with families, family life as normal. Oh. You know what's funny, right? It's funny that people in the UK are so... It's, pe it's funny that you hear people from the UK saying stuff like, I can't wait to get back to hugging people. When if you're familiar with being in the UK, we're probably the most untouchy and public display of, you know, emotions and feelings ever. The whole stiff upper lip thing in the UK for British people is a real thing. We hate to show our emotions. We hate public displays of affection. We hate it. You can be on a train... I think the UK is the only place in my life which I've legitimately been on a train and seen a couple kissing and smooching on the underground and seen people visibly angry and move seats and make a noise. Like, oh, fucking. Like, mumble under their breath. Other places you might see people roll their eyes and look at their phones because it's a bit awkward. But the only place I've seen people legitimately look visibly angry where if the guy or girl makes eye contact with them, they're going to say something or stand up from their seat and go somewhere else has been in the UK. We hate public displays of affection. So for us to be in a place where we're longing to get hugs from randoms and from family is really a marker of how devastating the lockdowns have been. It's really a marker. It's ground us down so much that it's fundamentally changed us as human beings, which is why I am super suspicious or super hesitant to say that things are going to go back roaring to normal as before, because I don't know. I think some of that lingering damage is going to be it's going to be felt for a long time. Like as that lady said in the beginning, her granddad has got like what? Her grandfather's has like two shots already and is still afraid of going outdoors. So I'm not too sure how we're going to get rid of that residual sort of like psychological pain. But God damn it. Imagine, man, the COVID has made us people in the UK long for hugs. What a world we live in. Tony only lives a few doors away from his grandson, Rue. But for most of this two-year-old's life, they've just not been able to do this. Just a hug and a kiss. He gets you through it. Rue looks happy. He gets you through it. <laughs> Losing me sister. Bless him. He got me through it. This little lad, he's just got his own magic. <laughs> you know, whatever sadness you've had, and whatever joys you've had, and it's all gone. It's just start again now. Just start again. Yeah, put the tomatoes back. This is a day for the quiet majority, for the people who haven't just given up or decided to do whatever they want. It is the majority who have got us to this point, and many of them have made the sacrifice of their lives. Many more students are now back on campus, but some believe that May the 17th is just far too late. 
usually we you know we'll interact with people in lectures and have tutorials and you know meet at coffee shops and stuff but man how i miss being fresh faced and just giddy about being around my friends and being in the university and just you know just happy with life like wasn't that a time don't you look back on that era and even if you didn't go to college or you didn't go to university just that era in that time because this kid looks what just probably oldest maybe 19 18 years old do you remember how that felt how good it was just to get up at night just sorry to get up in the morning stay up late at night sorry how amazing you felt at life like just oh the electricity is just pulsed same from look how fresh his face is his skin's all taut and stuff look at his hair's all full loving life man what an era you actually enjoyed being in libraries right fooling around revising right trying to chat up some girl you're into like, you know, walking past some dude that you like, shaking your little yoga punt, your, your little yoga pant batty. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that era? What a good time to be alive, man. Now look at us. Oh, God. Old and washed up. <laughs> I haven't been able to do any of it, so it's been a bit sort of like the only interaction we're getting is over Teams and Zoom. <laughs> I've been at home, like, in my um, hometown since December. I've That's dread, isn't it? That's existential dread. I've been at home. <laughs> Went to kill myself. <laughs> like, that's how you, the only way to deal with that. This is the only way you can deal with having to be locked indoors for 14 months. Imagine how, honestly, just imagine, just picture it for a moment. You're a university student, right? You, you're from a really strict household. You're not allowed to go out and enjoy yourself and do what young kids do. So in a weird way, you're using the, the avenue and the process of going to university as an opportunity for you to blossom and to fly free and do the things that you've always wanted to do. Get drunk, hook up with people, you know, stay up late, whatever it is, play computer games until your eyes completely bleed. Whatever your sense of freedom is, that's what you were longing for. And then boom, out of nowhere, this flipping virus comes over from China and eradicates all possibilities of you living on your own for once in your life and you have to move back home after talking all that big talk about what you're going to do in university you're now having to you know get back on your hands and knees and hope your mum hasn't changed your bedroom into another storage cupboard ah! <laughs> i would absolutely be crying i would be crying i'd be doing exactly what she's doing now like <laughs> yeah i've had actually one of the worst times in my life <laughs> i'd be doing the same thing i'd be doing the same thing back to reading like two weeks ago um, so it's been really hard, like, trying to do online learning just from my bedroom. <laughs> hard to keep motivated and everything. Oh. Audiences are back too. All these spaces have sat idle in Cardiff for far too long. Yeah, I've introduced cinemas. a couple of films already today and I had a bit of a cry, I must admit. Um, it was, oh, bless um, her. Yeah, I got very emotional when I started talking to people. So it was a really, um, it was just a lovely feeling, like, kind of like seeing people so happy to be back. Well, and honestly, on hold. honestly, what do people, that's what I'm saying, the damage that COVID has done. She, this woman is clearly a movie fanatic, right? The kind of person that will legitimately recommend you a film, you know, in the middle of nowhere. Whatever situation you're in, she could recommend a film that will fit your mood and that will give you a different perspective on life. Somebody that's committed their entire life to movies and film. And somehow within the process of her life, she's managed to acquire a cinema, manage a cinema, work in a cinema, whatever it is. She's now sat in a place where she can be the person that's in charge of ensuring what movie show on what screen. Dream job for somebody that's involved in that scene. Dream job. Now you don't have that. That's your major part of your life. Like I said before, it's very difficult to have hobbies as an adult. Once you're into something, just enjoy it for as much as you enjoy it for as much as you can, no matter what people say and how cringy they think you are. Enjoy it and have a whale of a time because it's very difficult outside of sports to have a hobby that actually occupies and takes up your time, allows you to meet new, interesting, different people, and just kind of expands your worldview and all that malarkey. She's found it. And now COVID has happened and we're in lockdown. What does that person do? I'd hate to think of the amount of lives that have been lost due to lockdown of people within that movie space. People that live vicariously, you know, whose kind of only purpose in life is to go to uh, biennales and to go to film premieres and to go to workshops and all that malarkey. When that gets taken away from you, what are you doing day to day? And what did the government do to kind of help you along the way in that, in that regard? Give you funds, give you support, 
so you can't open your doors like look how happy she was at the knowledge of people coming in and being excited to watch movies people getting people getting excited to go into a cinema gets her off that's what keeps her up at night that's what makes her want to go to work in the morning the thought of being able to share this passion that she has with other people then it gets taken away from you that's why i'm saying honestly lockdowns are far worse than the actual inevitability of some people unfortunately passing away it's just it's just one of those things we can't ever ever go to a situation again if this ever happens again extensive lockdowns like this just can't happen the only way that we can actually the only way lockdowns have been demonstrated to actually work that we've seen so far is what we've seen in new zealand what we've seen in parts of australia what we've seen in parts of southeast asia but again those kind of places were able to maybe lock down their borders they were able to be a bit more strict with who comes in and out they're able to be stripped with some of the kind of restrictions blah blah blah, blah. and obviously with places like with places like australia and new zealand they're essentially an island so it's a bit more easier but if you're like a landlocked country in the eu or if you're a landlocked you know state within america it's fairly difficult difficult to make lockdowns effective and to make them work the only way you can make it work is to be super strict and super hard in the beginning for a short period of time and then let things open up extensive lockdowns just because the numbers keep going up just do more damage than good they really do feeling like kind of like seeing people so happy to be back while life has been on hold births deaths and celebrations have all been muted this is a little sign to say happy birthday Aww. Aww. Happy Bless you. until today I've been out quite a lot sitting in the garden, so I've kind of been literally taking hand warmers with me, loads of layers, scarves, everything, so it's nice to be able to sit in a t-shirt <laughs> inside, yeah. not worry about the weather as well. Yeah, I think it's the same here. I mean, a lot of people have had birthdays. I've had a birthday as well, and again, but sat in a garden, like packing like you're going for a sleepover, bringing blankets and everything, like gloves and hand warmers and sitting there, so it's definitely much nicer to be indoors finally. It will take time to readjust to all this. And however many bumps may lurk in the roadmap ahead, we are slowly moving towards freedom. Tom Parmenter, Sky News. Oh, mate. So, yeah, freedom at last, freedom at last. We're going back to some semblance of normality. But honestly, it just breaks my heart seeing that so many people had to suffer like this during this time, man. But I guess, you know, the silver lining is that we're now back to some semblance of normality, some semblance of normality. And 